So if you ask managers what is the one thing that they can do to attract and keep their employees from a manager standpoint, what would you be offering more of? As a manager, we would, of course, be thinking that it's all about money. If we throw enough money at the problem, then we'll be able to keep our employees forever and ever. Amen. But when you interview employees and find out what it is that they want, here are the top five. And this is taken from lots and lots of lists. You'll find different things, but it comes back to company culture and mission. Do people like working for you, and do they like what your company stands for? Approachable leadership. They want to be able to approach you in leadership, give their input, be heard, and that you're taking action on their suggestions. Investing in them, giving them the opportunity to grow to make them better, stronger, and faster tomorrow than they are today. Flexibility in work life, quality time, is one of the best gifts that we have that you can give to your employees because none of us have enough of it. And finally, recognition. Mother Teresa once said, we are more starved for appreciation than we are for bread, and that is equally applicable in the workplace. But when you look at all five of these, and they are all important, but the one we're going to talk about today is that opportunity to grow. So you might be saying, oh, but Lisa, if I spend all that time and money to train my employees, they're just going to leave anyway. Let me ask you a question. What if you don't train them and they stay? <laughs> so there are two ways that I can send somebody to training. Okay. What is your name? John. John? Okay. Can I pick on you for a minute, John? Okay, so I am going to send John to training, okay? John and I have had this conversation, so there's two ways I can do it. I can first say, you know, John, you and I have had this conversation again and again. I'm tired of putting up with you. As a matter of fact, I got this flyer in the mail. You're going to training. And I have been at those public seminars that John is in my program. And we lovingly refer to people like John as hostages or prisoners because they have to be there. So you are putting your well-earned training dollars into John who is getting no value whatsoever. What if instead I went up to John and said, you know, John, you and I have had this conversation on numerous occasions and I see so much more in you than what you're bringing to the table. As a matter of fact, I got this flyer in the mail and I was reading it and I was like, you know, this could really help you. It can help you personally. It can help you professionally. I would like to invest in you, send you to this training next Wednesday, and I'll even buy you lunch. And then when you come back from there, I'd like you to share some of the concepts with the team that can help us to grow as a company. Can I do that for you, John? Would you like to go? Yeah, so John would love to go. In my training dollars, A or B, which one is the better use of my budgeting? B. You tra change the conversation. I was doing a training for a group of team leads one time. These people had attitude, okay? One woman actually had attitude written on her T-shirt. So I knew I was in trouble. There were 26 of them in this half-day program. And right out off the bat, I called out the elephant in the room. I said, how many of you, by show of hands, look at training as punishment? fully 60% of the room raised their hand. So when we're looking at training, when we're looking at investing in our employees to have the conversation to create that culture where people want to learn, where they want to get better, and when they're encouraged to do so. And there are lots of ways that we can offer training. The lunch and learn. The lunch and learn, one of my favorites. I mean, you put that tape in the VCR, that's still flashing 12, 12, okay, maybe not. But you're sitting around the, the lunch table, eating sandwiches, having the same conversation together. So some people will walk out of this program going, lunch and learns, that's awesome. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, we're gonna do a lunch and learn next Wednesday. So I'm gonna put it in the newsletter, I'm gonna send out emails, I'm gonna make phone calls. As a matter of fact, I'm going to lurk, look at hiring a crop duster with a banner flying around the employee parking lot 
talking about this lunch and learn coming up. And Wednesday comes, and three people show up. <sighs> that didn't work. Never going to do that again. And the only thing that changes are the seagulls in the parking lot that are getting fat on the sandwiches that you threw out back there. So maybe instead, going up to those three people and say, hey, what did you like? What can we do better next time? What did you like? What can we do better next time? What did you like? How can we improve? And now those three people phone their friends. Next time you have eight people at a lunch and learn. Cool. It starts to grow. I've had clients say, but Lisa, we offer lunch and learns. We offer all of this training, and either people won't come in on their day off, they can't take time out of the field, they won't come. What about if you ask them, what would be valuable in training to you? What do you want to learn? Instead of all being focused on exactly what's good for the business, it doesn't necessarily have to be directly related to your business. Because when you can get your employees thinking in a different way, that changes the conversation and it increases everyone's abilities to think differently. A learning library. So if you have a learning library, a lot of times people don't necessarily know how to use it. Think about it. Your employees may not have picked up a book since high school or since college. So when you have a learning library, there's two ways to do it. Again, I can either say, I just went to this amazing program yesterday, and I got this book for you. What is the chance that that person is going to actually ever open up this book? Uh, zero. So what if instead I said, you know, I went to this amazing program. Do you notice the subliminal messaging in that? I went to this amazing program yesterday, and I got this book with 98 proven strategies to attract and retain your t industry's top talent. I would like you to go through it, find some things that we can do as an organization, come up with some ideas we can use. Now, what's the chance of that person opening up this book? 100%. So what we do is we train our employees. When you make resources available to them, let them know how to work them. Toastmasters. There are probably a few of you in the audience here that are saying, oh, I hate public speaking. I am so glad she's up on stage and it's not me. I mean, because we know that public speaking is the gr first greatest fear, second only to death. So according to Jerry Seinfeld, the person giving the eulogy would rather be in the casket. That's beside the point. So Toastmasters is a great way to practice public speaking in a safe environment. If you go to Toastmasters.org, there's clubs every day of the week, every hour of the day. It really helps. If, you're, if, you're, um, play, if your office is big enough, you can actually host a chapter in-house. But that's a really good idea to just help people to be more comfortable doing something that can make a difference throughout their career. Ongoing training in-house. Maybe you have HR, maybe you have a trainer, but what about the resources that you already have in-house? Your employees who are good at something that they can train other employees. I have one of my clients, they had an employee that went to Dave Ramsey's Financial University. And they offered that employee the opportunity to come and give financial training to the rest of their team. So take advantages of the resources that you have. Bring in an outside trainer. Yes, that is a person, that is a shameless plug. But if you look at bringing in an outside trainer, I can come into your organization and say exactly the same thing that you tell to your people and they'll hear it differently from me or any other trainer that you bring in. So look at the options that you have of bringing people in that are, that are able to share the message that you want, but coming from a different voice so your employees are hearing it differently. Public seminars, particularly if you have emerging leaders, if you have new supervisors, sending them to a public seminar where they are around other people who are at the same level as them, giving them that same information, they're networking with people, and if you're treating them well, that networking is not going to lead to them leaving you. 
but giving them the opportunity because when you have a new supervisor with you, they are thinking that they have to be perfect, and that's not the case. And finally, sending them to trade shows like here. They can see the competition. They can meet the, they can meet the competition. They can see uh, what's going on in the market, all the new technology. And frankly, these trade shows are held in some pretty cool places. So when your employees say, at the, when they, you send them here to Denver, next week when they're at the bar with their friends on Friday night, what are they going to be talking about? Oh, uh, yeah, I just got back from a trade show in Denver. And their friends are going to be like, really? Your boss let you go there? How do I work for that company? And it becomes a recruiting tool. So when it comes to you investing in your employees, it's the number one thing that you can do to keep them better, stronger, faster today. And I put together this ending just for you. When you plant the seeds of knowledge, you will harvest the benefits today and tomorrow. Thank you.